Welcome back to In Process. We are here with Peter Barron, founder of Carabiner Communications, and we are talking about marketing and preparing your company for sale. Um, you know, Peter, when sellers think about uh, their business and selling, there's a lot of things that they think of that need to be accounted for. Sometimes public relations is really not one of them. Do you think this is something that gets overlooked or undervalued with respect to preparing your company for sale? Absolutely, yes. We, we've seen that on several occasions uh, when the marketing and PR teams are, uh, are left on the bleachers to watch the executives um, play the game. Uh, and typically it's the CEO and the CFO that make those decisions, but then they work on the sales process. And it's understandable that they would want to do that because this would obviously require a lot of extra effort on their part. Uh, and, and it does defocus them from the, the, the regular business. Um, but, but, but my comments are, I think, a, a good fit for CEOs who are willing to take the time to prepare mm-hmm. and the ones that are not rushing into a sale. Um, the common mistake is that... Uh, um, executives move too quickly, leaving um, marketing exec- executives out of the loop. And you have to realize that marketing people are planners as well as creative people. And when you pull the rug out from under a planner, you create a risk that there'll actually be a vacuum in the communications. And uh, and that's going to affect your customers as well as your prospects. I, and I think that makes good sense. It's that whole idea of, um, well, and maybe it, it also has to do with kind of the world we live in today where... Um, Good marketing and PR should just pop out of your head <laughs> without really having to consider what is it that we're trying to achieve ultimately, how or how do we achieve it, and actually setting perhaps a true program and plan for how we get to, how do we actually execute our goals. Right. So, yeah. I, you know, I think it's um, so interesting to think about how do how do we actually put this information in front of a CEO, CFO, that perhaps are so focused on the internal processes. Yeah, yeah, those are good points. I mean, just to sort of echo, um, there really are no overnight successes, right? Yeah. Um, you find somebody on the top of a mountain, they, they didn't just fall there. You, there's a lot of climbing involved. Yeah. Uh, so that planning, that preparation, and I think getting, like you said, the attention of the CEO um, to involve the marketing team might be tough, but but for one that's forward thinking that that has planned a business for sale, I don't know what percentage of uh, of these companies, uh, particularly tech companies, are planning eventually to sell. But a lot of them start out with that idea, mm-hmm. so it's not a new concept to them. An opportunity may come that may cause them to run a little faster than they should. But if fundamentally a plan is in place and they're optimizing their brand and nurturing their pipeline as they go, mm-hmm. they can react uh, quickly to uh, the prospect of a sale um, because they've been doing good things all along. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think one of the things that we see is sometimes people don't understand the value of marketing or public relations because they their sales team is out there meeting people and they believe that the va- the true value is just in sort of them going out and meeting people. They don't understand the value add that marketing may be able to add to facilitate that sale. It, it's pretty much, a let's say, a B2B relationship at that point. I mean, what are some of the things that you think can enhance? How can that help in this process where it's not just, hey, it's not just a relationship. There's an added element, which is hard to see from a marketing and public relations standpoint. Well, um, th- that's a good question. It, it kind of opens a door for me to... Um redefine public relations. Mm -hmm. Uh, Most people think of it as press releases and stories. Mm -hmm. Um, There was a time when uh, reading stories in magazines and newspapers was more valuable than it is today um, because they had readership. Mm -hmm. Uh, Declining readerships have really changed that. Uh, People don't really go to uh, physical publications for their information anymore. You ask yourself the question if you've got to Something you need information on, where's the first place you go? And it's usually <laughs> Google, Google yeah. right? Yeah, some right. kind of search. Now, some of the content from a publication can make its way uh, into a, a search engine and be found that way, but rarely are you consuming it in the same form. So why is PR still relevant? Uh, we tend to think now of PR as a, a content uh, format. 
uh, rather than its sort of big separate discipline. There may be some PR people that are listening to this that will now put a contract on my life. (laughs) um, It's the reality. Now you need an integrated marketing campaign. Uh, Salespeople have the expectation uh, rightly so, that, uh, that when a sales lead comes to them, it represents somebody who's model, moderately interested in the pro- product, right? Or, mm. or, and, and so often if there's a conflict with marketing uh, between sales, it's because a sales lead is really worthless, right? Mm-hmm. And the salesperson uh, wastes their time in, in following up and making a call. The job of marketing now through these integrated programs is not only to attract attention, uh, or awareness, as it's often called, above the funnel, but it's also to nurture uh, these people that are at least moderately and nominally interested through a process, this nurture process, the consideration phase, uh, helping them answer their own questions or even interacting with them to the point where they get turned over as a sales qualified or a marketing qualified lead. That's the terminology people use now. Mm-hmm. At that point, it goes over to a skilled uh, sales force Uh, And you think about what they like to do. They're about negotiation and closing deals, right? They don't really want to have to spend the time reaching up into the funnel when somebody's in the consideration phase. They would rather somebody else do that. So now there's actually a little more love between marketing and sales departments because a marketing department that works really well is actually turning over highly qualified leads uh, to a sales uh, function, and they can then do their magic and and close the lead. So... um, so how does that define PR? And it's, it's a content type that's still really hard to get. You want the story in the Wall Street Journal uh, or in uh, the Atlanta Business Chronicle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it still requires a relationship and a special knack to figure out how to do that. Mm-hmm. But it's not going to turn the world like it used to. Mm-hmm. So then when you say that you're nurturing, you nurture those leads and um, or those potential, those those very early uh, kind of interested potential customers. Is that through digital content primarily then, rather than a human interaction, or is it both? It's a combination. So um, content is hugely important. Um, and designing and preparing the content that will be of interest to your prospect rather than a fulfillment of what you want to say so often that's a mistake in marketing. Mm-hmm. Here I am, I'm amazing, and here's why, why you should be my customer. Um, now the right kinds of content is built around what's the pain that the customer feels, what are they trying to solve, uh, then anticipating where they might go to look for it mm-hmm. uh, and having that content in the right places. Uh, sometimes the content might be a webinar where you mm-hmm. it's not really personal interaction, but you're listening to principals or executives in a company uh, and there's an opportunity for, for interaction. Uh, it may be that um, some of the content may come to you through uh, an email after you've opted into a list. Mm-hmm. And uh, there could be a button on there to say, contact me, that would result in uh, you speaking with somebody. So we don't eliminate the human interaction, but right. it just comes in at a time uh, when it's invited in by the prospect. It's, we all live in a world with... Uh, uh, voicemail and uh, but we uh, on occasion people get through it at our houses right when we're ready to sit down for dinner mm-hmm. and they want to sell you something we don't like that mm-hmm. and uh, it's the same in a commercial setting um, it's, it's better if we invite those people into our world and that's what we're seeing over and over how do you figure out which content is the best to do do you help the businesses decide that because sometimes We'll we'll get together and we'll like, oh you know it'd be great a new a new splashy article in the AJC or maybe we'll do a blog maybe we'll do a newsletter maybe we'll do a post um, we you know we'll we'll try various things uh, content I'm sure is better there's better forms for certain businesses than other forms do you help them make that decision yeah absolutely and and the the answer was partly in your question try. Uh, experimentation is important, so some A-B testing. So two formats of the same sort of information. So one might be a mini white paper of a particular concept, but you may then distill that same concept into an infographic Mm -hmm. and then put them both out there at the same time and realize the majority of people are looking at the infographic. Mm -hmm. Then you realize, okay, I'm going to kill the mini white paper. (laughs) And uh, so you kind of go through that process. You realize that people like to look at video. 
and and maybe so maybe you've got video, but then you don't know whether it it's, it should be sort of live production or animation or sort of uh, voiceover on slides. You can do A B testing on that. Mm-hmm. Um, so this integrated um, approach that I'm talking about is not only um, disseminating your information through different channels, right through the through the media, through email campaigns, through uh, webinars, um, but it's also formats text-based, video-based, graphical-based. Um, this mixture, you can arrive at the right uh, format and, and know when it's working because, of course, then the leads really start to flow and the leads are good. Mm-hmm. And if you've set the right measurements in place, you, you can actually watch these things, a little bit like the, the guy behind the curtain pulling the controls. <laughs> the uh, dials start moving yeah. and interaction starts Absolutely. occurring. Absolutely. You can start increasing your leads once you really have the right formula. So talk to us a little bit, though, about so integrated marketing. I think um, most people actually understand what that is, but this is actually integrating marketing with sales. And I'm sure that, you know, while um, personality-wise, there may be some similarities, but salespeople tend to have a um, kind of master of the universe attitude many times if they're really top salespeople. So... What's the challenge? What, what do you think the challenges are in trying to integrate marketing with sales? Oh, there's a lot of challenges there, right? <laughs> Personalities are, are inter- interesting. Oftentimes, if you find that a company has created a position, an executive position, where it's a, a senior vice president of sales and marketing, they're really a sales guy. Mm. Um, it's rare when we've seen somebody that sort of leans towards marketing and they've got sales in their title. Um, you want your salespeople to be aggressively focused on closing business and working leads and on only sort of moving forward on the ones that look like they're the most likely to come in. Uh, you want that. Uh, marketing people perhaps are a little more optimistic in nature, uh, preparing the field, seeding, um, kissing a lot of frogs, trying to find a few princes, <laughs> right? Um, so you, when you've got those two personality types, a very creative uh, type on the marketing side, planners, very pragmatic, uh, move forward uh, personalities on the sales side, complementary um, in a team, but you, you're always going to, th- I think, have a little bit of conflict there. Now, you may be in a, a business where the, the profit margin is very slim and people have to, customers have to help themselves. Um, in, in which case, there's going to be very little interaction with anybody in sales. It's going to really be a whole marketing uh, process, drive mm, somebody to a website, to. have them plug in their credit card number, and order the product, right? right? And there are lots of things that you can do to assist with that process. If the margin's a little bit better, you can afford a customer support or a sales team. Um, then you're going to have the personalities on your team that will be able to speak with people and accomplish what you need to. Well, we need to take a quick break, but we will be back with Peter Barron of Carabiner Communications. <laughs> 